Hey everybody and welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode and podcast from the editors here at CCJ Overdrive and Truck Parts Service. I'm James Gillette and my co-host on the other side is Jason Cannon. Uh, This week on the 1044, like it or not, take it or leave it, Joe Biden is officially the leader of the free world. What does that mean for trucking, especially in the near term when 2021 was widely expected to be a fairly strong year? We'll dive into that and more. The presidential election was held about two and a half months ago, and it feels like uh, about a year now. Uh, but Joe Biden was officially and ceremonially sworn in to the office uh, January 20th, uh, bringing some kind of finality to a process that has been, let's just say, uh, often combative. Uh, Jason? <laughs> Yeah, twist of irony here, James. And speaking of combative, while the inauguration was taking place on just about every major news network on the planet Wednesday, the UFC was live on ESPN, and those bouts got settled a lot faster than the election did, for sure. Yeah, no doubt on that front. Uh, And most analysts agree that, at least for the first half of 2021, uh, the freight recovery that we saw last year will continue uh, into this year, and uh, FTR in particular estimates that uh, truck loadings should rise. Uh, They forecast 5% this year uh, over last year, and uh, their final report for 2020 was that uh, truck loadings dipped last year 4% from 2019. So by their estimation, truck loadings this year will be a little bit better than they were in 2019. Uh, But there's still a great unknown out there, and that's what a new political party in charge could mean for the transportation segment. Uh, And just Today, that would be Thursday morning, uh, we heard from Mayor Pete Buttigieg in the Senate um, just the day after Biden was sworn in. Uh, He testified in front of a smattering of senators uh, on the Transportation, Commerce, and Science Committee um, about various aspects of his potential, uh, his role as potential DOT secretary, should he be confirmed. Um, And it was it was fairly vanilla hearing. Most of the questions revolved around highway funding and infrastructure, uh, and all of that was even very high-level conversation and not much substance to to it other than, uh, you know, we need to figure something out on that front. Uh, And on questions related specifically to trucking, like the continued ELD waiver for livestock haulers and regulations paused by the Biden administration, like the uh, split sleeper sleeper berth uh, pilot program that had just been announced, uh, Pete's answer was basically, quote, we'll look into it. As luck would have it, well, we've got a guest this week who's going to share his thoughts on what the Biden administration could mean for trucking, specifically what a Democratic DOT could mean. Uh, FTR's VP of Trucking, Every Vice, he'll be joining us shortly. There's an old adage that I really like, and I have no idea who said it originally, so we can just pretend that I made it up. And, and it goes, nothing is ever as good or as bad as you think it is. I know there are a lot of people out there that think a Biden administration is going to be bad for business. So I ask Avery if he thinks, in the grand scheme of things, will a changeover in Washington lead to upheaval in transportation? Well, if we talk about the, you know, the economics of trucking, putting, putting regulation aside, <clears throat> I really don't think that it matters all that much. In terms of how it affects market conditions, <clears throat> we just don't see that over time. I mean, we, we see you know, strong markets in Democratic administrations. We see weak markets in Republican administrations and and vice versa. And so it really has only a marginal effect on what you can expect. Um, If we're looking at a a 2021 um, that to us looks like a very good year for trucking. And frankly, I don't think would look any different uh, depending on the outcome of the election. Of course, along with Biden comes his cabinet, specifically presumed Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Uh, And here's Avery's thoughts on what we can expect from Mayor Pete's DOT. I think we can probably say goodbye to uh, to the pilot programs that were announced in the last few months. Um, You know, none of them were finalized, I don't think. Um, We had one obviously proposed, you know, two of them came directly out of the, the hours of service rule that was issued. One was the uh, three hour pause, uh, up to three hour pause in the 14 hour window. Um, FMCSA, of course, decided it didn't have enough data on that to move forward as part of the final rule that took effect at the end of September. Um, so instead, they proposed a, a pilot program. And then, of course, the younger driver pilot program that was also now uh, proposed a few months ago. And of course, more recently, in fact, just last week, we had a, a third pilot program proposed in order to um, to test more 
splits. You know, under the current rules, you have a 8-2 uh, split that's allowed and a 7-3 split that is allowed, but, um, but not a 5-5 or a 6-4. Um, I, you know, those could move forward, I suppose. I don't think it's going to be a high priority for that to happen. I, I think we will see those fade away. I don't see the hours of service rule being something uh, that, you know, the changes that took effect in September uh, being really on the table um, in the near term. It, it is potentially something that FMCSA could come back and initiate a new rulemaking on, but we're talking, you know, well into 2022, probably before there would even be a, a final rule issued and, and maybe even later than that before we, you know, see anything happen. There's no shortage of things Mayor Pete may look to enact, and Avery noted several things to watch, including one that he thinks is very likely to happen. There's a few other gray areas that I've been looking at. One is this whole um, preemption determination rulings that we got out regarding California and regarding Washington over their meal and rest breaks. And that one's kind of interesting, too, because we had the, the um, just last week, we had the um, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals basically rule that yes, FMCSA um, properly or, or you know, they weren't gonna overturn FMCSA's ruling there. Um, whether the, you know, what, this is probably something that we would certainly have not seen out of the Biden administration, whether it's a big enough thing for the Biden administration to, to then try to reverse, I don't know. I, I don't have a sense of that. Um, some things that I do think we will see uh, we will we will probably see a, a reemergence of speed limiters as an issue. Um, we'll probably see a reemergence of, of sleep apnea, um, obstructive sleep apnea consideration, um, and you know CSA, uh, which has kind of been hung up for a long time. Um, you know, I think one of the one of the first things we'll probably see is a restoration of the um, of the public scores on carriers, and frankly, I think that's likely to happen regardless of whether we, we get the IRT, you know, the, the item response theory um, uh, addition to CSA or not. So for the first time in a decade, the White House and both the House and the Senate uh, will all be led by Democrats, which Avery said could offer trucking a curveball or two. First, you know, that becomes a wild card because then again, you know, uh, we may see legislation, for example, um, that would impose, say, higher insurance limits immediately or impose uh, a mandate for stronger, um, you know, underride guards on trailers uh, and put a very tight time frame on them. Um, that isn't, you know, necessarily going to be coming directly out of the, the Biden administration. It, it also might not necessarily be something the Biden administration objects to. So, uh, you know, when we look at what's going to happen, I think what makes a wild card out of all this is the fact that you have, for the first time in a very long time, well, in fact, first time in a decade, uh, that you have the White House, the House, and the Senate all in Democratic control. Coming full circle to that, nothing is ever as good or as bad as you think it is, what will Trump's legacy in transportation be? Avery's going to share his thoughts. You know, beyond just sort of a, a general deregulatory and pro-business stance, I mean, if you want to pick one thing in particular, um, I think it's probably the hours of service changes. Um, they're common sense changes, I think, for the most part. Um, and um, they, you know, I don't think, I think I can, you know, I'm not going out on a limb saying that we would not have seen them in a Democratic administration. Um and, uh, you know, if you look at just the 30 minute rest break rule, it, it, the rule as written was pointless um, because it was not going to be uh, adhered to anyway. And it was really just a, you know, a, an exercise in paperwork. Um, and so, you know, there are other elements of, of the rule that I think are, you know, are, are significant changes. Um, you know, there are others that I think would have been, but I don't think they'll survive. Again, you know, a, a more, balanced stance regarding, um, you know, independent contractors, for example, but, but I don't think that's going to survive. Um, but I do think, you know, some um, relief uh, in regulation in FMCSA is a big deal. And, and you know, the, the tax reform that I do think freed up, you know, considerable amount of capital, um, which is not, of course, specific to trucking, but, you know, certainly I think helped 
considerably uh, in, in fueling some of, the, uh, some of the strength of the economy that, that we had in, in 2017. Um, you know, that, that's something I think that the, the Trump administration can, can hang its hat on um, as well. Yeah, I agree, Jason, with, with Avery there that uh, hours of service is probably the biggest legacy of the Trump DOT. And by, by all measures, it was uh, a fairly muted overhaul, uh, but it was still one that helped alleviate one of drivers and fleets uh, biggest beefs with the old HOS. And that was the nonstop 14 hour clock. Um, I'll also say that there was a noticeable decline, you know, having covered uh, the, the Federal Register for the last 10 years, there was a noticeable, noticeable decline in regulatory activity under the uh, Trump FMCSA compared to the Obama years. Uh, and I'm sure that readers appreciated that. So, Jason, what do you think Trump's legacy will be for trucking? You know, I think part of his legacy is going to be the emissions rollback, as counterintuitive as something like that sounds. And that's not necessarily a concession that fleets don't care about the environment as much as it was acknowledgement that the modern trucks, with regard to their emissions, have been heading in a better direction for a very long time. If you'll remember, Trump attempted to remove CARB as the sort of de facto emissions bouncer. And there's a very real a very real chance that CARB's emissions standards may one day be so out of step with the EPA that a truck legal in some states won't be legal in others. All good points, Jason. Well, that's this week's episode of the 1044. As always, uh, we welcome your feedback. Please send us an email at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call 404-491-1380 to leave us a voicemail. Uh, and until next week, everybody stay safe.